Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm on the early side of 9 p.m. ish, which is good. So let me know, of course. Can you hear me? You know, I'll never not open without asking that question first. It's two tone tonight. We have boxes. I posted about this stream, which always worries me. I had, I have a curse that kind of follows me, which is whenever I announce a stream, something goes horribly awry and sometimes I can't do it. So I'm always super nervous before I announce one. So I'm just thrilled that it's actually starting and we can do it. <laughs> I used a um, Hellraiser GIF, a pinhead GIF that was from Hellraiser 3 to announce this. And then some people got really excited because they're like Hellraiser comics. And I was like, oh, I wish I, it was a, it was a joke because there was going to be boxes and you know, what's inside the puzzle box and all of that. But alas, it is not Hellraiser comics. Maybe one day it will be because I have a soft spot for those. They're kind of hard to get a hold of these days. I looked into it and most of them are out of print. You got to go to eBay. You got to take somebody out with your elbows or other things, <laughs> but who knows? There's actually a Clive Barker work that I've been waiting for for a long time, which is not waiting for, but waiting to be able to get rather, which is Rawhead Rex. I mentioned it forever ago. It's one of those eBay items that I'm just looking at like, oh, maybe, maybe one day. <laughs> but it's an excellent adaptation of one of the short stories in the Books of Blood the movie is different. He disowned that for <laughs> reasons, which if you've read the story are apparent, but still we have things. So what's in the box? Well, firstly, you need to know what box am I even referring to? So I have a PO box and I use it mostly for um, some of like the indie comics that I get and for people who want to send me things or have emailed me. So, you know, I need a safe address to uh, to send it to. Also, I see the box you opened it, we came. It's making me smile. But some people, um, some of you were kind enough to just send me things that you thought that I would enjoy. And I actually filmed an unboxing video, but it was so amazingly awkward that it will never see the light of day. And I decided that this was just better. So they're not, they're already unboxed because <laughs> that's a video that I will probably post for my, my members. Firstly, half of it is just me struggling to open the box because everybody who sent me things was so kind to properly package it. So there's me just ripping. <laughs> it's so bad. And then I got, there were notes and it was so kind. I got all mushy and emotional and awkward. And I think the last half of the video is just three minutes of me being like, thank you. I was like, I, <laughs> it's not good content is the best way to put it. But I wanted to say my thanks and show the things and not be such an inarticulate mess. So <laughs> yes. So some, a couple of them had notes, one, one didn't, but I did get an email that the person wanted me to read these. So the first thing is you can't, you can't see it cause it's a special black edition uh, cover, but it's solar man of the atom alpha and omega. So <laughs> I got that from, from Valiant and the person's been emailing me saying they thought I would really like it. It's all nicely bagged and boarded. I have yet to open There's something about opening something bagged and boarded. I don't know. It's like, you know, like it's like you're undoing something <laughs> that you're like, once it's all opened, it cannot be closed. The Pandora's comic by bag and board. <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to checking this out. And with it came this, there's stuff fluttering. You can't see it, but there's flutters. Um, revelations came with, and they're all floppy. So I got to keep them extra safe. <laughs> keep it secret. Keep it safe. <laughs> so I am very much looking forward to reading these. I have not read these um, at all. So this was very thoughtful. And, you know, I'm always excited to hear when somebody thinks that I'm going to enjoy something because that's half of what I'm doing here, <laughs> which is just, hey, you want to hear about comics? So my free Cozoid shirt, I feel like is very appropriate this evening. Like, hey, want to read some comics? Do I? <laughs> we are Fergie. Thank you very much for the super chat. Your bubbly personality is just what the doctor ordered after a not good weekend. Well, I'm sorry to hear your weekend was not good. I'm hoping that this will be entertaining because the second thing, uh, the second thing has some 
we will laugh. Laughter will be had. I wanted to, that's the other reason I wanted to do more than um, just the unboxing video because I wanted to be able to show you some of the pages um, and some of the stuff that came in the in the box because there is actually a box. There's a box. <laughs> Quellum7, thank you very much. Thanks for the content. Well, thank you for being here to view the content. So this one, um, this one was from someone named Daniel. They were kind enough to send uh, a nice note with it. And I wish that they had sent an email so I could respond with a thank you note because I don't know, my mom was always like, you send thank you notes to people. <laughs> so he sent me this. This is the League of Regrettable Superheroes, which is a collection of just what the, these people consider to be questionable superheroes, mostly from the Golden and Silver Age and a tiny bit from the Bronze Age onward. Sadly, not as many there. I think they missed out on some questionable people in the latter half. But he sent me this largely because Dollman is in it. And I said, well, thank you. But how dare you? <laughs> Dollman's amazing. Also, Matthew Osborne, welcome to the fanboy stud level. I want to, so basically it's just a collection of really questionable superheroes and write-ups about their histories and who created them. And it is entirely a hundred percent up my alley. This is, I, I love this. I've already been flipping through it. We are going to get videos out of this. So thank you to Daniel because some of these characters, like I'm gonna have to, it's not enough to let them live in the pages. <laughs> of like some of them I knew about of course like here's Kid Eternity and stuff like that but some of them like Justin Wright Justin Wright I already came across because of Dollman oh and they have all their slogans here and it's so so good it's so good I love looking at old stuff like that like the face the face <laughs> is so good Dr. Hormone there, there's some gems, wonderful gems in here. The Red Bee's in here too. The Red Bee is someone I've just always wanted to talk about, fashion icon that he is. Have you ever noticed the Red Boy, Red Bee's see-through sleeves? Because they're pretty great. <laughs> they are pretty great. I love looking at these. Look at the speed centaur. Look at him. Look at how great that is. <laughs> Oh, I love this. I want, there's somebody who I was like a hundred percent. This is, and some of them we've actually talked about, which I found quite funny. Like it wasn't just doll man. Like some of them, like, how dare you? Buona Beast, <laughs> Buona Beast is a disaster, but he's our disaster. <laughs> oh, look, one of the Captain Marvels, one of the Captain Marvels before you were going to get sued into oblivion. Captain Science, who I think we just need to bring back this instant because that name is amazing. <laughs> Captain Science and the covers. Like if you've done lots of scientific research, you know that most of it's pretty tedious for most people. So like, I love these action oriented. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. <laughs> oh. So some of these, yeah, some of these are pretty great. Um, some of them we're going to talk about, obviously, like the Legion of the Super Pets. And um, obviously, this isn't everybody who's questionable, or some of them I don't feel like are questionable. And some of them have came, come back, like, look, it's the Peacemaker. <laughs> He's back. No longer regrettable, I guess. We should put it potentially at the time of this printing. You know, it's like at the time of this recording, like at the time of this printing, we regretted them. But maybe later we won't. We don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Who knows? Pow girl. Pow girl. Keep it simple. Just an era of green lighting everything. <laughs> See, this section is the modern age, the 1970 to the present, or like the present when this was written, obviously, but that, like there's this section should be bigger. There's been more questionable content than that, but let's all just look at Adam the Extreme. I remember the 90s. <laughs> A moment of silence <laughs> for the 90s. <laughs> Well, we talked about that one issue of uh, 90s Superboy, and he'll come back. He'll come back again. It's definitely going to be a topic that comes up more than once. Another captain. So many captains. Captain Victory. <laughs> uh, and the Galactic Rangers. Oh, forget them. They're the end. <laughs> uh, 
the ferret. A rat will never get the ferret quality content. Oh, and they revamped him. Look, he's edgy now. <laughs> Chase, great. Thank you very much. You are one cool pickle. Am I a sweet pickle, though? A dill pickle? <laughs> what kind of pickle? Oh, this is some, check it out. Gunfire, the living weapon. Just, ooh. <laughs> oh, we may get an Adam, um, an Alvin sighting. It's got Adam on the brain. Adam the extreme. My cat has ventured forth. He may come up. He may meow. Just so you know, uh, Alvin is a Siamese cat, so he has quite the distinctive loud meow. There he is. <laughs> Are you going to come up? No? They, I think the people want to see you. Why don't you go back more so that they can see you? You going to come up? Hi. I think the people want to see you. Let me see if I can angle you down so they can see you. There you are. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> now I can't fix it. What have I done? What? Have, why have I done this? What kind of operation are we running here? <laughs> oh, now the angle is wrong. <laughs> it's all gone wrong. Hi. Oof, you're shaking everything. This is why I normally lock you out. Wow. Yeah, why don't we... Here he is. Oh, he's so loud. He'll settle down eventually. He's just excited. He's very excited. His brother is downstairs. We have two Siamese kitties. They are Alvin and... There you go. They are Alvin and Theo. Yeah. They are, yes, they're named after chipmunks. They were already named that we didn't, we didn't name them, <laughs> but, but I thought it was really cute and sweet and they, okay, so he has the appropriate collar because he's Alvin, but we can't get a collar onto Theo. He hates it. He will spend just his entire life trying to get it off, but <laughs> they have divided the house into territories. So he's upstairs most of the time. So you probably won't ever see Theo, I brought him up here once and he reacted like I'd removed him from his habitat. He was so sad. So he he doesn't come up here very much. You can settle. You can settle. So yes, there's going to be like things coming out of this. Will you stop? Why can't you just calm down? Why can't you be calm? Why are you shaking everything? Uh-huh. You're going to give the people... Cloverfield vertigo, shaking everything. Just sit down on the lap. Sit down on my lap. Sit down. Sit down. So the last thing I got was a really big box, a shoe box. I'm going to edge back a bit because it keeps whacking the table. I need to get the box. So it was a really big shoe box. And I had an inkling. I was like, no, but... But nobody would be so kind as to send me like a bunch of their old comics or anything like that. Oh, Rio Fergie, thank you very much. Your kitty is a super cutie. He's a good kitty. He sometimes does a villain kitty stuff, which is great. He perches and glares even when he's really happy. So, and I opened it and there was a really kind letter with it from a Donald from... Berkeley and who just sent this really nice letter about how it was time to pass on some of the collection to someone who we thought would appreciate it and do whatever I want with it, sell it, raffle it, keep it. And what I want to do is I want to show some of them to you because it was a really thoughtful curation of some of them, which is you need to stop. You don't need to send everything. I know these comics don't smell like you and you're like, what is happening? Like Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. And look, he's elastic lad. So it's one of the transformation, um, one of the transformations. And it's so good. Look, elastic lad wrestles ugly Superman. <laughs> quality content. That's just, that's quality content right there. And the second one, the very second one that I took out was <laughs> Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lay. <laughs> I was like, yes, the only comic that matters, <laughs> the only comic that matters to anybody, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. So I was super excited about that. There is 
one of these Supergirl issues from the Sikowski era when she's changing all of the costumes. There is the new first approved costume. I, I read this issue, so I remember reading this. This is so interesting. Oh, and then there's Jerk Superman, which is always great. So, you know, you can see that right there. You know, I could save that astronaut, but I won't. <laughs> which is just, stop it. Alvin, what is it that you need? Just love? You just need love and attention? There's a whole bunch of people paying attention to you. There's some old Adam, which is awesome. I'm actually a really big fan of the Adam I am. There's Supergirl in here. There is the Mighty Thor. I'm a low-key secret uh, Thor fan. I've talked about it before. So there's a bunch of Thor in here. Several Thor issues, which I'm really excited about. There is the sleeper hit uh, Batman family. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's going to settle now, though. He'll go and find a place and settle. So this is one of the Batman families. And the best thing about having these is, I mean, if you go and get the facsimiles, you get the ads. Like, the digitals don't have the ads. But I love seeing all of the old ads in them as well. And the paper quality is so good on these. It really is. Like, I know it's just, like, newsprint, but it really holds up. So now I get to read all the old ads as well, which is one of my favorite things to do. I love checking out all of the old advertising. And look, Slim Jims. <laughs> Oh, there was a Captain Tootsie Roll in the uh, Regrettable Heroes. And I always forget how old Tootsie Rolls actually are because they're a Depression era candy. So it's like, yeah, yeah advertise the Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> there is some more Superman featuring Clark Kent's phony death. So you know that this is an issue that I will, I will enjoy most likely. I love questionable Superman more than anything. <laughs> so good. <sighs> there is a giant Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, featuring the human skyscraper, which is the one he transforms to something one as big as a building. When Flame Boy, Alien Olsen, Pinocchio Jimmy, it just, oh, Jimmy turned into everything. Quality content, the origin of the Elastic Lad. So, you know, we can understand when he fights the ugly Superman because you don't want people to be, to be lost. <laughs> That's so nice. I'm going to have to keep these so safe. My daughter's already very interested. She's like, Ooh. And I'm like, no, you have to have your, she now has four comics of her own and she reads them almost daily. So hi, Alvin. <laughs> Look at him back there. What are you? Ah. <sighs> You know, I actually have long boxes, but they aren't, uh, I don't use them for comics, but I will start doing that, I guess, because uh, I use them for fan fiction that I print out. That's a thing that I do. I print out fan fiction. Never forget that I am, I'm a fangirl first and foremost in all the ways. <laughs> Greg Pectus, thank you very much. What do you think of Wonder Woman's look since New 52? I don't think she's ugly at all now, but has a generic model look. Prefer a strong Amazon warrior look. I thought you meant like her costume. I... I can't say I've noticed that much variation in how like other aspects. I'm always more focused on like the color accents and stuff that they're giving her. In this bag is all of Crisis on Infinite Earths, which I talk about often enough. So <laughs> you know that I have a I have a copy of Crisis on Infinite Earths in its collected form. So I'm not sure what I shall do with these. They are in decent. They are in very good, um, very good condition. I might go down to my local comic shop and see what they want, if they want them or anything like that. Now that I go there and they're nice people that I can talk to, we'll see. <laughs> and so that was a subdivider, which I messed up. I messed up the sub because they were kind of divided into Marvel and DC. And then I went through the box and messed up the beautiful organization <laughs> that was already happening. So let me reorganize it and get the last couple of DC ones up in here before we switch over. Well, actually there's Thor at the front, so that's not true. What am I even talking about? Why do you listen to me? <laughs> oh, there is more Superman in here. Giant Superman. This, 
<laughs> this covers everything. Like, why do you need to read anything else except Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen? Look at that. Oh, so good. There we go. This is a little arc. There are a couple of Supermans in here. Don't fall out of your bag, please. <laughs> and there is a whole bunch of Fantastic Four down here, which is super dope. There is so much Fantastic Four down here. I've talked about it before, but I, I love the Fantastic Four so much. Look at the Impossible Man. Oh my God, as she just absolutely yeets everything. See, this is why I can't have nice things. This is why I can't have floppies, you see? This, I'm a disaster. You just saw evidence of why it shouldn't happen. But <laughs> there he is. Look at him. I have to be so dainty. I have to be so, so careful. <laughs> I have to be like, ah, let me not use my Herculean Hulk strength as I throw things around. Check it out. Check it out, 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 out. There was a, the thing looks really good here. There was a cool thing Funko at the um, comic store. I was like, don't buy any more Funkos. You don't need them. That's the thing. Like you don't actually need them at all. I don't even need the ones I have. So. <laughs> uh, giant size Spider-Man guest starring the Human Torch. The Human Torch and Spider-Man's friendship is one of my favorite things. Just evolving from them like pettily hating each other to being friends is so good. So, so good. Not enough comics these days acknowledge how good friends they were, in my opinion, at least. I know sometimes they do it on occasion, but it used to be, like, a big thing. So, ah. Uh, this is, look, we've got Guardian, which is just, you know, alternate dimension Johnny Storm, but still <laughs> really cool. And look, it's my boy, Quasar. <laughs> there, there he is. Yes. Even though here he's called the Crusader because there was a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff that happened with Quasar and Crusader and things like look. <laughs> oh, look at Thor's long hair. Can this be the end of the God of Thunder and his amazing model haircut? No, it can't. Look at that. So so good. So yes, this was very, very thoughtful. And I was uh, I was quite taken aback, honestly. I I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Just, I I really appreciate this a lot. And as many of these as I can manage to bring into the channel in some way, I will. I just want, you know, I want the person to know that they are they are very appreciated. All of these are appreciated. Like nobody has to send me anything. So I'm really grateful that people took the time out of their day to extend that little kindness in my direction. It's very, very sweet. It's very heartwarming. Yes, I'm repacking the box. I'm so ginger packing over here. <laughs> Skano Nafel. I, wow, I butchered that, but thank you very much. I just threw away a binder of fanfic from the early 2000s. I have so much fanfic saved. I'm glad because sometimes you go back and it it's gone. <laughs> it's just gone. There we go. I've got to put Jimmy back on the top. So here we go. Let's do 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 do. Jimmy goes back on top so that every time I open this box, I can have joy. <laughs> And looking at Jimmy. And I keep the note. I always keep when people send me notes and things like that. Sentimental like that. I have cards from forever ago and things like that. And they just, I can't, I can't get rid of them. It's not a hoarding thing. It's I can throw out other things like no problem. But I'm like, someone took the time to write me a note. Alvin, what do you think? <laughs> He's so flat. He's a pancake back there. It's just a pancake on the ground. God, oh, there you are. Hey, <laughs> I gotta do more, uh, more Jimmy videos at some point. I actually had a uh, a stream of consciousness thing that I filmed uh, explaining how I get 
my video ideas. And I was like, nobody asked for that. <laughs> but it was after the uh, Morbius, the Morbius video where I just, I had like seven ideas spring up at once from that. So there were so many directions that that could have gone. There we go. Ooh. Here we go. Off to the side where it's being held. Alvin is just monopolizing the stream. Look at him. Look at him back there. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's the best part of this stream. Let's not lie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So every time I do a video, there's always about seven or eight potentialities of future videos that branch off from there. So it's one of those things where if I had more time or like more resources, it's probably a good thing because some of these tangents would go on for quite for quite a long time. Although I'm probably gonna come back to Hugo Strange. Like I didn't just post that random Hugo Strange thing from Prey. I was looking into some Hugo Strange things at the time. And he may he may come back around <laughs> at some point very, very soon. So yes. <sighs> oh I have of course I have drinks today. I just haven't shown them yet because I wanted to show all of the boxes first. Cause yes. Oh, of course, you know I have more Lois getting married. I see that request over there. There's still a bunch that I haven't gotten to yet. And now that my shirts are in, it's exciting to be able to wear them in the the videos. I, I, I had them for a while. I didn't launch them right away because the first one that arrived, I didn't like the centering of the logo because I order samples of my stuff to check the quality of the material and things before I launch them. So... I had to do one round and I resize the design and then I put that out. And so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I have I, ideas for where I need to, you know, it's all, it's all happening. <laughs> Always things are happening. Psycho Kitty, thank you very much for the super chat. I see all you're like, yeah, kitty, kitty. <laughs> I'm very surprised. He's very mellow. He's normally a lot chattier. It must be because it's kind of, hot up here. I don't know. Why was that hot? Hot. Isaiah Harris. Are you, thank you very much for super chat. Are you still planning to do the vigilante bit? Yes. Vigilante is 50 issues and vigilante is kind of intense. Okay. So vigilante packs a lot of plot into each book. It's, it's going to be a long video unless I decide to do it broken up. Currently I have a vigilante origin video about halfway scripted because he debuts in the new teen Titans, well, not new teen titans 80s teen titans new teen titans and so i have that so i might launch with that and then maybe break it up or find a different angle other than retrospect other than retrospective to tackle it from which i have an idea kind of you know we have an idea that's just kind of coalescing and hasn't fully gestated or formed yet it's you know so it's sorting itself out that's for sure but i i enjoy vigilante a lot so i'm looking forward to talking about you know dc's punisher as they call him but that 50 the first the 50 issue arc is really cohesive and sad and it's a lot of a lot adrian chase's story is a lot of a lot but i kind of like that about it grip oh my god i'm gonna do this right i'm gonna do this right greg Pectus, thank you very much. Have you read the CB Spider-Man versus Dracula? Prefer April Fool's video. Build it up as the greatest battle of all time. Spoiler alert, they never meet. <laughs> I have not read it. <laughs> but now we can't do it because now people know the spoiler. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, personally, I'm not a fan of doing April Fool's Day vids because they uh, they age out very quickly. I mean, as someone who constantly says at the time of this recording, it's not for me. <laughs> Amazing Asian, thank you very much. Love your vids, more live streams. If you could find the time, please. <laughs> you say that now, but you get sick of it. It's true. Think about it. <laughs> it's always leave them wanting more. Showbiz advice that holds true. Don't have the supply, exceed the demand. Hashtag business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's what we do here. Business. <laughs> Imports and exports. <laughs> a 
last night's orange juice. And the second drink is the cherry bubbly, which was accenting the orange juice to make it more exciting. Make your own Jimmy Olsen style comment. <laughs> I have honestly, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's so funny because I love comics so much and it's not even a thing that has crossed my mind as of making my own. Like there are other things that I would make and that's not one of them. <laughs> yeah, mergers and acquisitions mostly. <laughs> what would our company be called? You can't call a company like a proper, like casually something. No one would hire you. They're like, yeah, we casually just, oh, speaking of, I have had a terrible business encounter lately this has nothing to do with comics but it's been absolutely atrocious it's been going on for like two weeks life things <laughs> there's always life things happening outside of of the comics i'm so far behind as always but i'm even more behind than usual on the whatever is happening in the main verse you know infinite frontier kicked off still haven't read it still have not read a thing <laughs> That's why, that's not why you're here though. <laughs> oh, so yes. And now that, you know, now that I have things like this, it's going to take me a long time. Let me find Red B. Where's Red B? Where's Red B and his awesome, I heard that Red B is kind of a queer icon and I can believe it. There he is. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> he's he's kind of great. I have fondness for the, for the Red B. Hit comics number one. Quality comics. Look at this. I mean, come on. Look at that. Feel the vibes. Feel the energy. <laughs> let it let it roll with you. Also, hey, a shark. Now there's a connection. <laughs> Sharks. It was so funny. I was midway through working on King Shark, and then I posted the image, and someone was like, oh, just in time for Shark Week. And I was like, it's Shark Week? It turned out to be Shark Week. That's so funny. I was like, wow. Was like, I'm on the same wave like I put it up on out into the universe and it came back just sharks you should do sharks <laughs> Bradley good thank you very much for the super chat Hugo Strange is an interesting character can't wait to see your videos on him Hugo Strange is underrated and there's this interesting thing that's happened now that Jonathan Crane aka the Scarecrow has become more popular and since they tweaked him more from being a professor into more handling the psychological like psychologist angle of him it's kind of like they're kind of stepping on each other's toes sometimes in the modern era which is too bad because Hugo Strange has a lot to offer you can do some really interesting and disturbing things with Hugo Strange so yeah just it's just sometimes hard to I feel for some people avoid that overlap that can happen because as the scarecrows evolved he's taken on some of Hugo Strange's aspects where Hugo Strange has just become, well, stranger and stranger, <laughs> as it were. I don't know if the world's ready for me to handle Prey, but I looked into getting a physical copy of Prey because I'm going to announce the book club probably tonight or tomorrow for the next time we're going to stream one of the things we're all going to read together. It's most likely Kingdom Come. Last time I checked, Kingdom Come was still winning. So that's most likely what we're doing. But sometimes I go through things I'm like, oh, this would be fun. And then I go and it's out of print or really I just I like physically holding it for the book club like I could share my screen and we could just look at the pages that way but I don't know it's not the same it's not the it's not the same as actually holding it so the point is I looked at prey do you know that prey you're looking at for like an original prey like over a hundred at this point and I was like I'll think about it <laughs> I was like, listen, if I'm doing that, I already have Rawhead Rex on my list and it's coming first, even though that video is going to be demonetized and age restricted, <laughs> but it'll be worth it for my love of Rawhead Rex. That was the same with some of the Junji Ito stuff I've been looking at, because the one I want to talk about is the human chair. And I'm like, can I get away talking about the human chair? The human chair messed me up. It's also such an obscure Ito work, I feel like. And I'm like, yeah, the human chair, his sequel to this short story by a Japanese horror author, that's what the people want. Scotty Rob, thank you very much for the super chat. Have you ever read the trash tastic Marvel comics? And if so, will you cover them? I have read them. I have. Um, I don't know. I feel like everybody has talked about that. I the, and I'm not one of those people who's like, that means I can't. But it just means like I don't know if I have anything unique to contribute to the conversation or if it's just like a thing that people just want to see me 
hate on it or bash on it. So I don't know. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't call to me in the way of some of my more odd video choices. Cause really what you're watching is just like whatever comes into my mind of I need to make this. Like it, it starts off as <laughs> it's the fever, the rage. <laughs> it just, it starts off as this, like, I really need to tell people about this. That's genuinely where the things come from. And then I go and I find what, what angle, what I think is interesting, what I want to highlight the most. Like right now, I am working on a video about a meme. That happened. There is a there was a meme video coming out. I've done memes before, like Batman slaps Robin, Hail Hydra. We're doing another meme. It's happening again. New meme time. It's not new. It's actually old. And that's been fun. And I'm going to get to do a uh, reverse flash voice effect for part of it, which always excited to talk about the reverse flash or Professor Zoom. Every video you may have noticed when I talk about the reverse flash, I also mentioned that he used to be called Professor Zoom. And there's a really, okay, I did a video years ago. It wasn't for this channel where I uh, mentioned that he'd been called Professor Zoom and someone tried to like, well, actually that's Hunter Zolomon. You bleh. And I knew that I was right, but I wasn't in a position where I could reply or say anything. So I'm always like, he was called Professor Zoom. I knew what I was talking about. Ah. I don't mind like being called out if I'm wrong or being wrong. It happens. Yeah, I'm not right all the time. But that was one of those times where I was right. I was like, no, but I know because it's always something that's made me laugh because the comic 139, Flash 139, when he debuts, I think it's 139. Now people are like, that's not it. And he, he the, the comic is called Reverse Flash. Men is the Reverse Flash. He says, I'm the reverse of the Flash. He's like, I made my costume the reverse. And then the next panel is, and I'll call myself Professor Zoom. And I'm like, but why though? The name was right there. It always made me laugh and stuck with me. I was so happy when they finally dropped it. We're just like the reverse flash. It's so simple. It works. That's good. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's just leave it there. Freddie B, thank you very much. DC Who's Who A to Z series from 86 to 87 post-crisis. You're the only one who could do it justice. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like a bit of an undertaking. <laughs> Jamal Taylor, thank you very much for the super chat. Have you thought about covering Star Trek? Yes. Yes, so much. I own Star Trek comics, but they are in the Star Trek box. Okay, so for some reason, Star Trek Star Trek is my um Star Trek is my first fandom love. Before I even knew what fandom was, it precedes my second fandom love, which is Dragon Ball Z. But um, it was my first fandom love, and so everything is that Star Trek has its own special space, and so the Star Trek comics are in the Star Trek box. It's just the love of Star Trek. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could contain it. <laughs> I don't know, like, if I could keep a lid on it. Just be like, this is one comic and this video is one hour long because we're talking about all things Star Trek. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have, um, I also have a bunch of the DS9. So my favorite track is, I mean, it's hard to pick. It's really hard to pick, but um, Deep Space Nine, DS9. And so I have a bunch of those and those are really hard to find because not everybody cares about those. Love DS9. Benjamin Hall, thank you very much. What about DC's Prez or Brother Power the Geek? Prez is... There's... A... Oh, I didn't show it, but there's a Prez in here. Prez is in the box. I have an issue of Prez. So, yeah. Prez. I mean, maybe one day. Maybe one day, just because Prez is a... Prez is a trip. White Raven, 696. Thank you very much. Peggy Carr is my favorite Marvel character. Would you do a video on her to tie into What If? Her arc on, in Avengers involving Mother Knight was wild. Maybe. You know, when they did, when they dropped that trailer, I, I collect the What Ifs in trade and I have a bunch back there. It did, it did ignite the whole, I should talk about some of the weird ones that I, I enjoy. I, enjoy some strange what ifs and then the urge came again when we talked about morbius and then the six arm spidey because there's that really fun what if he kept his six arms what if so every now and again it's like it, it perks up so you never it might you never know <laughs> it, it might it might happen you don't know what's gonna happen here because i don't so that's that's how we roll <laughs> that's how we roll out here but never never say never <laughs> Greg Peck this. I'm getting better each time. Thank you very much. Have you read P Peter David's Captain Marvel run? I almost gave up on Marvel before I read it. Everything was dark and boring. It enhanced Marvel in I don't know how to say that, but <laughs> I haven't, I've read a lot of Peter David stuff. That's not something that I've read at the time of this live stream. 
I've read a lot of Peter David Star Trek books, actually. That was my first introduction to him. He wrote the um, Imzadi books and the like, and I read, I still read those. There are a couple at the top. One of my favorite Star Trek books is over there. Hold on. I talked about it on a live stream that I did not live stream a da -da 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 podcast that I, where I talked about and uh, yeah, it's Sarek. I keep it out. I reread this at least once a year. It's just one of my favorite books ever. And I love Sarek ever since I was a kid. I don't know. Spock, love Spock, love Sarek, love the Vulcan, just everything, you know, I'm a nerd. I used to go to um, used bookstores specifically to look for Star Trek books. I bought this from a library. It still has the um, library thing on it. And I went in and they were looking to get rid of it. And I was like, why not? So yeah. Corin Hollymon, thank you very much. Any opinion on the Mass Effect series? Sorry for getting off topic. No worries. There are Mass Effect comics, so we can bring it back in. I like Mass Effect. I haven't played, um, I haven't played in a long time. I know they remastered it, but I um I liked it when I played it. I have all of the games, not the remastered, but the old ones in a pack. Aiden Johnson, thank you very much. I love your videos. Will you consider making another Batwoman video? She's one of my favorite characters. I actually have a Batwoman video filmed on a, a confusing history that I have not edited. So maybe at some point I'll edit that. But now it's super awkward because it's another one of those videos where I'm pregnant. So <laughs> I'm like, I should just roll with it. I can do an intro and just roll with it and be like, back in the day when I was pregnant, I filmed this. And then it just kind of fell by the wayside for reasons. Whatever, Em. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't say whatever without being like, whatever. How about Marvel classic comics? You know, the comics based on classic novels like The Scarlet Letter and Moby Dick. <laughs> JK boring. I actually don't think that would be boring, but that's just me. <laughs> what I've always wanted to do, but they're hard to um to find some of the awful, oh, so awful romance comics. There's a series. I wish I could remember the name of it, but where all of the stories are allegedly based on like actual letters written in. I'm like, I really want to know if this is true because some of them that I've read, I've just been like, hmm, did this happen? Call 911. <laughs> I'm really concerned. I'm really concerned. But yeah. No, it wasn't Young Romance, but there are tons of them. There are so many questionable romance comics, and I love it. I love it. There are some new ones that um, do them in that style. I'd say they're equally questionable, but sometimes they're trying to like, they're trying to copy that so it's not always quite as genuine but I read those two <laughs> when they come out <laughs> Anthony Broderick thank you very much I would love to see a comic series of you being a talk show host interviewing characters in both Marvel and DC comics who would be your first guest? Oh, like Space Ghost from Coast to Coast <laughs> underrated I don't know I liked Harvey Birdman more than Space Ghost from Coast to Coast who would be the first person that I would interview dull man <laughs> I would be one of those people interviewing like all of, like the random, the random people. <laughs> this is like, who is that? Didn't he was on the team for two weeks? <laughs> what do you mean? Benjamin Hall. Thank you very much. Did you ever read Buffy season 12, The Reckoning? Which Buffy is that back there? That's season eight. <laughs> I don't think I did. I have been, ho I hop in and out of Buffy. I read the recent Giles uh, one shot. I actually really liked it because the art was by um, Mirka and Dolfo, who I found through the Harley Quinn, Black, White, and Red series that we were reviewing, and I've been following her since. I actually really liked it. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like an out of canon, random, like, what if Giles was a vampire, and they're all telling their different versions of what that would be like, but I had fun with it. Foggy Broom, thank you very much. Speaking of questionable romance comics, did you ever read Young Heroes in Love? No, but it sounds like I should. <laughs> If it has in love in it. I'll probably, I'll probably enjoy it. I enjoy a trashy romance. Why not? <laughs> I'm flipping through the book again. Brother Voodoo's in here, you know. I don't, is he regrettable? Do we regret Brother Voodoo? I don't know. Let's ask the people. Let's find out. Can I say that I am loving this Too Faced wig? I wasn't sure about it at first, but... No, I'm, no, I'm super into it. 
I have this one and I have the more extreme Harley one, but I, I really like this. I feel like this is actually a thing that, you know, I can get me a two-toned car and like just, just go for it. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a costume. That, this, that's a, ooh. no, <laughs> let's try again. <laughs> You can fix a costume. There's still hope. Uh, Gunmaster, the bullet, the gun boy. Dracula, back when you could do vampires and then you couldn't. Some people want to do Sauron. I mean, Sauron is a clever workaround. I do enjoy when people cleverly work around the code. It's not like Zuvembi's where it's just they're so annoyed that they're just like, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing it. Zuvembi's is, it's always really funny though. Like he's some kind of Zuvembi. <laughs> we all know Wonder Man's a Zuvembi. Thanks, Scarlet Witch. Speaking of Brother the Geek, he's in here. Allegedly regrettable. <laughs> not DC Zuvembi's Mirror Universe, Marvel Zuvembi's. <laughs> How do we feel about Marvel Zombies? Just curious uh, for the people who are on the uh, live stream. I've heard very different, strong opinions on it. Stronger than I was an anticipating, to be honest. But <laughs> I just, so I, I want to hear what your thoughts are on it. Some people seem to really adore it. And some people seem to be like, let it, let it die. Even though they're undead. At least it got milked too much. Yeah, I can see that. There were a lot of them. I remember when they were coming out with a new one, and I did a count, and I was like, isn't this like 13 or 15 that they've like just beating it into the ground? <laughs> I have to use a beating a dead horse gif for the uh, meme I'm doing. Someone tried to call the joke police on it and be like, joke police humor squad, which is a joke that I used in it. It's one of the jokes I use often in my home. <laughs> to say that it was over and dead, and then it came back stronger than ever. Strike me down. I shall become more powerful, basically, is what happened to it. Which is always fun. Benjamin Hall, thank you very much. Giles season 11, which is legible, and Buffy season 11 and 12 are horribly bad. Okay with Marvel zombies, but let it and Marvel apes die. I don't know. I need to read, like, with everything. I remember people tell me it's bad or good. I'm like, I got to read it myself. Like, I don't, I don't know until... I've read it. Even if someone describes it to me beat for beat, I'm like, okay, but that's still your retelling. So there are parts, because people have, have you ever had that happen? Someone tells you something beat for beat and you go check it out yourself. I'm like, that's not what happened. Like, are you okay? <laughs> Did we read the same thing? I've had that happen so many times. I'm always like, no, like I'm just gonna, Speaking of that, there are two things that are coming out, I think, next week that I have um, pre-ordered that I'm going to talk about. One, I'm going to be late, but that's okay. When am I ever on time? Which is, I'm not Starfire. I um, I pre-ordered it, but I accidentally sent it to my dad's house. So <laughs> he's going to be like, what are, why is this here? So I'm going to have to go get that for my dad. And then I'm going to read it because I want to see for myself. And then I'm going to do a video and I'm probably going to call it Let's Talk About because that's a good YouTube title. But also, I just want to talk about it and I want to see how I feel about it. I, I like reading the YA novels to see how I feel about them. Some I like, some I don't like. We will see. I also pre-ordered Mom, the um, Daenerys Targaryen, aka Amelia Clark comic that she's writing with a um, Marguerite, I forget. But I got that because I, I want to, again, I want to see too. Everybody's like, ew, period power. I'm like, I need to see, like, is it is it a satire? Is it a comedy? Like, what are we doing with it? Like, I want to I want to read it and maybe I'll hate it. Maybe I'll like it. Maybe I'll met, but I am going to see and then we can talk about it and hopefully laugh. I always want us to laugh together. <laughs> That's one of the joys of life. Laughter. Oh, we have fun. <laughs> we have, we have a good time. This guy looks so happy. I didn't see him on my first flip through. He has no hat though. Look at the, look at the Mad Hatter. He's so happy. Look at the joy. But where's his hat? <laughs> Where is his hat? Why does he not have a hat though? I'm I'm honestly reading through to be like hat where. 
I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe someone knows. <laughs> Why are people talking about Booster Gold in the chat? My Booster? I love Booster. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, Booster. <laughs> There's a, that new booster series that I'm, of course, going to raid. I'm, of course, all, as always worried that there's going to be like, remember all that growth booster did? Forget about it. Throw it out the window. Back to basics boost, which tends to be booster's life story. So I, you know, the set back to factory default, the booster gold story, <laughs> essentially, is what happens to him a lot. But nah, he's, he's one piece. Most of the time he is like my, my fave. But it's hard to say that because I cycle through things so so intensely meow Nyan, thank you very much for the sticker oh that's so cute is that shiba inu oh that's a cute doggy that's a cute doggo <laughs> and that is a very cute doggo hmm. i want to get a um a doggy but i want to get one that we know will get along with these wonderful kitties because they have when we first got them, they didn't get along because they set up their territories and then we're like, my space. Now they're finally settling in. So I'm like, I don't want to upset the dynamic with a with a doggy. I don't know what that will do. I don't know what that will do to the <laughs> to what, what we've got established. We shall have to see. But you can't get a um you can't get a dog where I am right now. Everybody's adopted them, which is sweet, but it happened during COVID because one of the things you were allowed to do was walk a dog. So everybody went and got all the dogs. <laughs> so now you either have to go to like a breeder or something and I'm, I'm going to wait and, you know, see maybe next year, maybe next year there'll be a dog up here too. They'll just be pets, pets everywhere. I saw the solicits that there's going to be um, some more vengeance of Amparella, which I am excited for. Always happy to talk about Vampirella. I've got to, I've got to do more, more Vampirella stuff soon. And Red Sonia and the like, and all the people, just as always, so many things, so many videos, so little time. I checked how many I'd made recently and it was like in the hundreds. And I was like, whoa, I did not realize that it was that it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like that many. Somebody was asking, uh, have we ever seen your natural hair? And I wanted to go and count how many videos I'd done it in. And I got distracted by by how many videos there were I was like whoa I didn't realize it had crept up to that to that amount because I'm not a milestone person so I didn't you know some people like this is my hundredth video I'm like every video I do is just like a video that I make so I don't know <sighs> all those hearts are for the kitty that's nice yeah hearts hearts for Alvin he would appreciate it if he was awake he kind of is He's so passed out. He's got one eye open though. Always vigilant, forever <laughs> They're very good. And the best thing is they are they were socialized with humans from a very young age. So they're very good with kids, which is great. My kids can do whatever. I've caught my littlest one who's almost a year now, which my goodness, <laughs> using one as a pillow, all kinds of of things that some kitties would not tolerate. So I'm super glad that I'm super glad that they're so chill and relaxed. I'm super glad he's behaving. I was really questioning whether I should just lock the door like I normally do, but it's it's so hot and I need the airflow to come to come through the attic. So yes. Hmm. I'm so flattered. I can't, I still can't believe that people sent stuff to it. It's, it's normally just for, again, like, like potential collabs or, or stuff like that. When I can manage to organize or work those out in some way. Witchblade. Ah, Witchblade. <laughs> How to even approach tackling Witchblade? I don't even know. I owe some of my comic book love to Witchblade. So there is a nostalgia there. <laughs> there is definitely a nostalgia when it comes to, to Witchblade. Did anybody here watch the anime? There was a Witchblade anime that uh, that came out. There was also a uh, 
okay, so I don't know. I recently went to like a Powerpuff Girls phase. It's because I was in the store looking at the kids' comics and stuff, and there was all this Powerpuff Girls stuff. And I remembered all the Powerpuff Girls, comp, Powerpuff Girls anime, all of the Powerpuff Girls goodness. <laughs> I bought Powerpuff Girls makeup recently. Just the nostalgia was strong. The nostalgia was strong for Power Girls. They had a they had an eyeshadow, like an eyeshadow stick that was mauled after the um, villain him. And I, of course, I was like, I need that. Him was one of my faves. So, ah, uh, some of you remember the anime. That's good. I feel less alone. <laughs> I could never get into it, funnily enough. I was just like, it's too different. And I was young and I was like, eh, I don't feel like putting up with it. <laughs> oh. I got the one with um with him, the Mojo Jojo one, and then there was the princess villain, the spoiled girl. And so I got that one too. Oh, you're rolling over, huh? I got that one too. <laughs> mm. I can't stop staring at him. Oh. I'm trying to think if there's any like interesting comic book news or anything that I've seen recently or that kind of stuff. But it, when I'm not working on the channel, I had to have hobbies that have nothing to do with comics. I know that sounds hard to believe, but it's true. <laughs> it's really true. So <laughs> there are other things. There are other things that happen here in the casually comics household. Hmm. <laughs> Any chance of Lana Lang? Probably. Oh, yeah. It'd be so great to have a rival Lana series. Even Lana's time as Superwoman is pretty interesting. And I've thought about tackling that uh, a couple of times. <laughs> I've thought about it every now and again. And it's, that was an interesting, that was an interesting comic for a, for a while. There's been a lot of talk of like the new 52 lately I don't know why like it came back around and like people started talking about it again and I dug out some of my old stuff there some people are like in today's video they're like why didn't you talk more about King Shark being Constantine's ex and it's like because that's literally all there is to it although when I was because of that when I was looking up King Shark there is um so much fan art. There was a lot more King Shark Constantine fan art than I was expecting. Like I wasn't surprised, but it was it was just I hadn't expected it to pop up quite so readily and handily to the top. And I was like, oh wow, King Shark and Constantine, their love is alive on Tumblr and Art Station. Psycho Kitty, thank you again very much for the super chat. Drew Kennedy, thank you as well. I feel like you're not into horror comics, but if you are, have you read anything out of Hill House? I love horror comics so much. Drew, where you been? <laughs> I love horror comics. I don't get the chance to talk about them anywhere near as much as I as I want to. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have. I may have, but um, I recently read one called Abattoir that was really interesting, and the art was was very good. And oh yeah, the old. EC comics. Some of them are are wild. Like they they did pick the worst cover for the Senate hearing. They're like, look at what they're doing. And it's like her head beheaded in the basket. And I was like, those comics were going so hard. And I I love them for it, but I can understand looking from the outside looking in and being like, what is what is happening here? <laughs> those comics went real hard. There's a bunch of um, what have I read? Like I, I read, of course, like Lock and Key, although I didn't feel that was like that, that it wasn't like, there are different levels and different types of horror, basically. And again, like I said, I love the Hellraiser series and there's a whole bunch of very different Hellraiser comics. And there's a bunch of horror adaptations that are really good as well. The thing with horror is hard to pull off. Horror and comedy, they're very hard to, to pull off. And if you fall on your your face in either of them, you fall hard. You fall really, really hard. Hank Deasy, thank you very much. Do you like the Hellblazer series? I'm, I'm a, like, I like, li you know, it's not strong. I'd, I, I'm on the planet neutral. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. I don't, I don't have strong feelings. <laughs> I just don't. Not as strong as I have for, say, like, my Sandmans or stuff like that. I remember when, like, Sandman was the, uh, 
was the thing that remember like in high well when i was in high school sandman was the thing <laughs> Have I read any of the new Swamp Thing series? The first two issues. I've read the first two issues, but I haven't I haven't caught up. Or That's the thing, too. With these old back issues, especially if you're picking them up on Comixology or something, which I like to do when I can for the better quality scans and the like, those are 99 cents versus the new ones. You know my entry price is 99 cents. Versus the new ones where they are like five, six, seven bucks. Like, it's... It's steep. It's it is steep. Like the cost. Like when I went to like I mentioned this last time when I talked about going to the comic book store. But when I went there, and then you're weighing that cost versus like a whole entire graphic novel. You know, it is a it is a serious it is a serious weight to think about. Psycho Kitty, thank you again. You're inspired by Alvin. <laughs> representing, representing. Mm. Let me catch up. There's a bunch of emojis and the like. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. So what is everybody reading right now? Like what is, what comics are you keeping up with? What are you reading? Just um, all of that, all of that stuff. Oh, someone just asked me like, what are you reading now? It's funny because they have a Spider-Man uh, one of the 60s Spider-Man is their display picture. So it's almost like the Spidey meme where they're pointing back at each other. But I want to know. I want to know what you are reading. What I am reading right now, this instant, um, is a bunch of reverse Flash issues. The first four specifically. The four before the um, the video that I did for Lois Lane. Those four are the reverse Flashes. With Miss, the two with Mr. Element, the one where he debuts, and the one where he tries to marry Iris. That one's so awkward, <laughs> but yeah, I, I would, oh, and I, Black Sad uh, as well. Let me catch up. Oh, wow. Really varied. Really, really varied list of what everybody is reading. I love that. I love that. Urban Legends, Return to Wonderland, Static. Criminal Coward. Oh yeah, the art Joel Jones is doing on um, Wonder Girl. I, I love it. It's beautiful. Scotty Young, Strange Academy, Immortal Hulk. Yeah, the, I love that everything is here. Whatever M, was there ever Canadian comics industry? I'm sure there was. If there was, I haven't looked into it. <laughs> The Flash, DC New Frontier textbooks. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. What kind of textbooks are you reading, Jocelyn? <laughs> what, what do you have to read? 1970s Red Sonja, Avengers versus the Defenders, New Milestones, Damien's Robin. I have been keeping up with Damien's Robin. Marvel's Masterworks, whole bunch of, whole bunch of The Drifting Classroom. Paul Burke, thank you very much for the super chat. Loved your videos. I've learned a lot. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for watching. And I always hope that when people watch the videos that they're inspired to go and just check them out and look look more into them and, you know, find out all kinds of different things. I didn't touch on Zero Hour in my Superboy video today because the issue zero there is from Zero Hour, which is why he has the sunglasses and everything there. And the next issue where he debuts is issue nine. That's King Shark. And he had the cameo at the end of issue zero. It's because they were tying into zero hour. But I was like, oh, if I detour and talk about zero hour, that would be, <laughs> we would never get out of here. Zero hour is such an interesting event because I feel like it's one of those things like some events I feel like just kind of fall through the cracks and I kind of feel like zero hour is one of those like people who are reading and stuff like they know about it but people tend in general I know there are exceptions but in general people tend not to talk about zero hour all that much oh maybe I should I don't know zero hour was zero hour was a lot of a lot and it's so funny because that Superboy issue zero like some 
so it's like with event crossovers today, like some comments you can tell don't want to do it. It's like, oh, let's get it over with. Get it over with so we can go back to fighting King Shark and doing the things we want him to be doing. Being cool in Hawaii. <laughs> Superboy's comic was was an interesting an interesting time and it ran for a long time. Like when I mentioned that he's in Hawaii for the first 48 issues, that's four years. That was four years. Like, you know, it ran for a lot there was a lot of Superboy eventually named Connell, eventually then later named Connor Kent. <laughs> hmm. well, let's see. Zero hour was bad. <laughs> Please make a bit on it. It's really interesting to see how events age as well. Because sometimes I'll do um like, for example, whenever I talk about Secret Wars from the 80s, the 80s Secret Wars, the first Secret Wars, not Secret Wars 2, <laughs> Secret Wars 1, I loved that Secret Wars so, so much. I thought it was so cool. Like, one of the coolest things that I have ever read. And, like, my friends who are around my age, like, we all think it's just, like, dope. But a bunch of people who were older and were like, oh, what an annoying event. Like, I hated it. So I'm just like, that's so interesting. I think it's so interesting how, like you know, this, this, the time and the era and everything can make things seem so different. I don't know. Like Secret Wars for me was, whoa, like seeing everybody together in, in the same place and Julia Carpenter, Spider-Woman shows up and all the Doom stuff. Just like, I I know that the Wasp makes out with Magneto, but there's so much more that happens in that. <laughs> so much more happened in it than that. Then it's, ah, uh, Secret Wars, in my opinion, was really cool. Black costume, just so many things. <laughs> And Secret Wars 2, I tried to do a video on Secret Wars 2. Okay, this is one of the videos that was not. Because I just, oh, Secret Wars 2 is, is a mess. It's it's hard to talk about Secret Wars 2. I don't hate it as much as some of the people I've re like read reviews on talking about it. But oh my goodness, the, the whole like the beyonder comes to earth and has to learn to do earth things. I was like, hello, every like 80s fish out of water <laughs> movie. Greetings. <laughs> Sorry, just saw a comment in the chat. <laughs> it says Magneto is a sexy beast. <laughs> and I'm laughing because when I was a kid, I watching the X-Men cartoon in the 90s, I had a crush on Magneto because of the voice actor. <laughs> I thought the voice actor's voice was great. Oh. To be young. <laughs> to be young and watching X-Men the Animated Series. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. When people still called him Magnus. Now, everybody calls him Eric because of the uh, first class and stuff. So, you can... It's almost like, again, like a generational thing. Because like, I remember him being called Magnus all the time. And everybody's like, Eric. I'm like, I... I'll call him either. Call me by your name. Call me what you want. <laughs> I had so many Montero references lately. Just Lil Nas X sneaking about everywhere. Just fine. Because I love Lil Nas X. <laughs> oh. Now there's just all these, yeah, Magneto comments. <laughs> hey. You want to come over? You want to come over? Come up. Mm -hmm. Is that what you think? That's what you think about Magneto? What else do you think? Uh -huh. You like comics too? Yeah. No. <laughs> then why are you up here? If you don't like them, then why are you up here? You like me? I like you too. Mm -hmm. you, you're messing everything up though. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. He's very chatty. He's very, very chatty. <laughs> they both are. They both talk a lot. It was one of my things when, um, when I told my dad I was getting Siamese cats. He had them when he was a kid. He was like, they talk a lot. And he was like, and they have a, an interesting meow. And I was like, I didn't, I was like, whatever. And I'm like, oh, it is really interesting. <laughs> it's different. It's different than other cats. Like now when I hear other cats, I'm like, where is the mighty meow of <laughs> my kitties? Stop. Stop. Stop rubbing against it. Alvin. Yeah. 
You heard a dog outside. Now you're gonna protect me. Wow. Big brave. He's shedding. You can see it. <laughs> it's because it's summer. He's losing some of his coat. I should do a video on Catman. Catman's great. There are some great Catman comics out there. Catman and classic Silver Age Tiger Shark. Like, Catman actually stealing cats will forever be funny to me. <laughs> He's a real cat thief. We are Fergie. Thank you very much for the super chat. Just bought some Lois Lane's X merch. Love it. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much to all of you who have bought the merch. I had a really fun time designing it. I'm so glad that you all who have like purchased it and are partaking in it are enjoying it. Please send me pictures when you do. Like send them to me by email. Send them to me on my Twitter that I rarely check. Send them to me on my Instagram. Like tag me or something. Like let me see them. Like I, it makes me really really happy to to see to see that stuff and that it's being enjoyed it makes me you know i'm like yay i made something <laughs> i try hard to make it stuff that is it makes sense to us and it is slightly niche but not so niche that it's unwearable because that's the thing with the like the merch that i get from the youtubers that i support sometimes it's just a bit too specific to them and i'm like i wouldn't actually wear this in public so i like it when it's something that's also a bit more distinct you know i'm working on some more even more generic not generic isn't boring but more like just general superhero style designs as well for people who don't maybe want to like be like i watch YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Catman's changed a lot. I saw someone mention Gail Simone in the chat. Yeah, I remember like buff cooking you eggs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Dave Myers. Oh my God. Thank you for the super chat. Sorry, Alvin's shaking the whole thing. Get Alvin some treats, he says. Well, thank you very much. I will get Alvin some treats. He's a good kitty. He's so good that he even lets us trim his own nails and all of that good stuff. Are you going to leave? Okay, bye. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I have received enough love. The love quota has been met. I thought it was over. I thought the love quota was met. Are you leaving or staying? Decide. Are you gonna bother Theo? No? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I see some Alvins in the chat, like chipmunk style. It's so funny because that does happen. I will yell like like that when he's on the counter or someplace that he shouldn't be. <laughs> oh, you're a good kitty cat. You're very good. Making me want to do cat scene things. James Bond asks, why no Simon? Because we only have... um. Okay, so the reason they're called Alvin and Theo is because their their father that was Simon. So th this just continued on the name that way. Why are you bashing into to everything? There you go. Calm. Calm. We were lucky to get them. They're they're three years old, and we got them because they were. Um, you see his color. He is a hi. He is a chocolate. Uh, Siamese and they're not as popular people want the cream colored Siamese and so when they came out to be chocolate colored in their litter nobody wanted them and so they were kind of they were kind of left behind and nobody wanted them and so they were just staying living at the house but then they had to get a new stud after their father died and the new stud got really aggressive with them and so they needed a new a new home and so we were lucky enough to be able to give them a new home. Yes, you are good kitties. you are good kitties. I think I'm, you know, picky like that. They're great. <laughs> it's because a lot of people get Siamese cats for shows was what I learned. Also, there are a different, they're okay. There are apple headed Siamese cats and there are wedge heads. And people also prefer to get the wedge heads because again, it's a show thing. And these are the more classic uh, apple head or heart shape because what it is is that you have to breed them into that wedge shape. And so those ones are more exclusively bred. 
So these ones look more like how they used to look naturally before humans started to really kind of curate them as much. They're closer to that. Hi. I don't think it matters. I'm just happy to have cats. <laughs> I'm I'm very happy to just have some kitties. Asante Moit. Thank you very much for the super chat. Secret Wars, X-Men, the animated series, Simpler Times. The content you provide is entertaining and appreciated. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate the comment. Yeah? I know. I know. You're just as good. <laughs> I know. You are valid. You are valid. He has blue eyes. That's another thing too. So there are two different types of variations on each, which is they can be dark and also have chocolate um, dark eyes, which would put them into a different category. So there are a whole bunch of like, I learned so much about like cat shows and breeding and stuff when I was talking to the, to the breeder when we picked him up. We, of course, um, one of our things for getting them was that we couldn't stud them. So we... Had to have them neutered also because they were fighting each other so badly over territory. Oh my goodness. They hated each other because of it. Now they like each other. So that's good. Yes, so it is. That's good. You're a good kitty. I know. Now I'm just talking about my cats. <laughs> that's that's why you're here, right? Like, what's in the box? A turn. Ha! It was a cat. <laughs> Schrodinger's cat showed up in the stream. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got derailed by my wonderful cat. <laughs> I like talking about him. He's a good kitty. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to settle? No. Hmm. Oh, Silver, uh, Silver XT has a good question that I will pose back to you, which is, what comic arc should everyone read right now? So what, based on what you've enjoyed, would you think is something like a comic arc that people would enjoy, that they would enjoy reading? <laughs> yeah, Aaron, witness me. <laughs> there we go. You gonna settle? Yeah. Flash for sure, but which Flash though? <laughs> There's some, like current Flash, new Flash. Jay Parker, thank you very much for the super chat and for the smiley. I am smiling back. <laughs> it's a good, nice night just to be chatting about comics and boxes and cats, apparently. <laughs> Current Flash. Dark Knight's Metal. Excited for Star Wars Visions? Question mark. Uh, thank you very much, Jamal Taylor. And for the question, uh, eh? I, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot, so that probably says everything that needs to be said right there, I guess. I mean, if you forget, that's not that's not a good sign, is it? <laughs> that's not a good sign at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, a bunch of people are suggesting the, the Flash. Armor Wars, if you like Iron Man. Original Gwen specifically. <laughs> I reread, you know, I said it before, but I reread the comics that I don't like just to see if my opinion has changed. Same with like the ones I do like. I reread them the same way. And I own all of all of Gwen uh, like all of that Gwenpool run. <laughs> I still don't like it. I don't think I am quite as passionate about it because I'm not as close to it as like when I first read it, but I'm still like, no, I stand by it. I don't, I still don't like it. <laughs> And that's fine. Like, like what you like or don't like. <laughs> Let's see. Mark Grunewald, Captain America. There are some great, yeah, there are some great comics in that run. Kelly Thompson's Avengers West Coast. Let's see. Oh, Jimmy Olsen from Matt Fraction. Jimmy Olsen from Matt Fraction was a real, it was a love letter to a lot of those, uh, old stories it tried its best to recreate some of the feel and vibe but it's the silver age is gone and you can't 
a lot of the Silver Age was like not only the cultural mores of the time, but having to work inside that code. And people are still working inside of different modern, like, you know, contextual restrictions and stuff, but they're different. So even if you try and copy a different era, it won't entirely be the same because you're not in it. You can get close and some people can get really, really close, but it's not going to be an exact duplicate of what it was. <laughs> Let me see. Matt Fraction's Hawkeye, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. DC Bombshells. I have read DC Bombshells. There was a DC Bombshells figure at the comic book store and I looked at it. <laughs> the Clone Saga. Not. <laughs> there are some good moments in the Clone Saga. Don't hate. <laughs> David Rober, I ordered my Lois Lane's XT. Thank you very much. I hope that you enjoy it. That one was really fun to uh, to make because it was just like how to what to do with it. Like we went back and forth on the design for that one a bit. It was not one of the easier ones. Like some of them just come like, you know, like right there. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is what we're doing. But that one, it took some back and forth. But that like when I saw that concept, I was like this. This is it. This is the concept that I I want because this is the comic that it is <laughs> essentially. I felt okay, like I re there's that but that one's not Superman's go from Lois Lane though, so it doesn't count. But there's one I've been I've been saving where the guy ends up dying at the end, and it's just mm, mwah. especially because it's the Bronze Age too, so it's like this weird holdover story from the past era, and it's let's give you a little bit of a sample. So Superman sets Lois up with this man, but she can't forget Superman. And so this man is like driven to do all of these things to impress her. D despite the fact that she likes him, but he's just not Superman T to the point where he gives himself superpowers, which ends up resulting in his death. <laughs> and the reason why he even ended up being jealous is so awful. I'll give you a, okay, if you're here, you'll know like what it is. And when the video eventually comes up, you'll know the twist, but I have to tell you because it's so, oh my gosh, he ha she had this special camera through it and she was trying to take pictures of him doing heroic things. But every time she took a picture, it would be of Superman. And so he assumed like, oh man, like Superman's getting here first and I can't, I can't do it. And it turns out that for some reason, this was the world's most useless camera. And it took a picture of what she was thinking about at the time instead. And so even while she was watching him save people with the superpowers he got for her, she was thinking about Superman. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. You just want to cry. <laughs> you just want to cry inside for all these exes. He was one of the good ones too. Like sometimes their creeps are awful. Most of the time they are creeps or awful. And he was not. <laughs> I was like, oh no. It's because he wasn't creepy, isn't it? That's why he died. <laughs> That's why he had to die. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> Quality content. <laughs> Code approved. <laughs> Oh, no shrine room. I know. Like, pfft. my husband had a shirt idea where he was like, take me to your shrine room. I'm like, that's way too niche. I appreciate it. And I will laugh with you. But that's way too niche. <laughs> oh. oh, Tom Strong. I I like Tom Strong. There's a new omnibus coming out that I have on my wish list. I've got an alert set for when it drops. Tom Strong is underrated, in my opinion. I got Tom Strong, I read Tom Strong years ago from the library, and I was like, I borrowed that book from the library multiple times. Embarrassing, because I was like in university. I was like, give me the Tom Strong. <laughs> oh, speaking of libraries, my daughter asked for a library card, and I'm so excited. We're going right away to, to get a library card. And of course, in my, in my head, because I'm a 90s kid, I was like, having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. <laughs> I can't wait to go to the library. I'm so glad we can go to the library again. I'm like, yes, the library. Many good hours spent at the library. <laughs> How did the chat get on to talking gorillas? This is the gorilla grod. <laughs> gorilla grod and other the ultra humanite. Many, many gorillas. Choices. <laughs> so many choices. 
You that's like that's just a trope that every like that just keeps coming back. I mean, the talking animals, no matter what you're doing. Gorilla Greg. <gasps> Steven, you've graduated to having the Nightwing's butt badge. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, I have badges for people who are members and the like the top tier level right now is Nightwing's butt. That's awesome. Yes, from the video that we did um on Nightwing's butt. We have to talk about Nightwing more. <laughs> recently more robin videos since that's still like my ultimate like badge for people <laughs> oh yeah i'm i'm that person <laughs> i'm that person hey yeah <laughs> darkwing duke says nightwing but it's underrated i don't think it is do you know that there's a battle between nightwing's butt and hal jordan's butt i was there gandalf i remember Read it in the chat. <laughs> These are the conversations on Casually Comics. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not safe here. <laughs> it's not safe here. Oh, he really did leave. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. Cheesecake is my favorite dessert. Hal Jordan's butt can never compete. A bottle. Nathaniel Arnold calls it a bottle. I love that. I love it. Oh, Hal Jordan. Mm, my true love for all of the <laughs> all of the comics where he's just a mess. Oh my goodness. So many that I've read. I've been inspired to do so many just random Green Lantern videos and like keep it keep it together. Not every video can be Green Lantern defeated by a newspaper, but there are some okay, so the shark, Karshan. <laughs> so the shark not king shark so karshan was a green lantern video video green lantern villain for a while i'm thinking that because i want to make a video and there are some there are some choice fights between <laughs> between the shark and hal jordan and every time it's so embarrassing for hal there's some of my favorite issues <laughs> it's part of why i like the shark so much i'm like the humiliation that comes from Karsha. I think there's one great cover where he's he's just encasing Hal in a giant yellow coffin. And I'm like, the embarrassment. Just what is happening? <laughs> just oh my goodness. So I'm like, I gotta, it's just even just for that, talking about Karshan would be worth it. And they did revamp him decently in Rebirth. And I don't know. I feel like King Shark is getting a lot of play lately. Like he made it into the Arrowverse and then people really like the Harley Quinn version. And I think that that helped propel him over onto like other things as well. But I don't know. Karshan is silly. Like, especially the whole, like he, atomic energy touched him and he evolved millions of years in an instant. And that just made him a walking shark man with telepathy. But <laughs> it, um... It, I don't know. There's something about him that's kind of disturbing. And I like that. There is something kind of genuinely scary about the, I don't know, like a malicious evolved shark man. I don't know. For some reason it works for me. It's working for me. <laughs> Reverse Sasha. Greetings. You'll never upload a video faster than me, Sasha. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat, Reverse Sasha. But you have a reverse. Oh, did you Photoshop my face onto the reverse flash? That's great. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm here for that. <laughs> as much as the reverse flash freaks me out. But <laughs> oh, let me catch up. There's a bunch. So because uh, King Shark is making the rounds because the Suicide Squad movie is coming up. So they're starting to pump out those articles and stuff. There's a bunch of like characters in DC who aren't actually sharks. There's Tiger Shark. So the Tiger Shark, I mentioned him earlier in this very stream. He had like a the striped costume and everything in the Silver Age. And he had like scuba skis. They was just like, it was very silly. But they revamped him recently and they gave him like an Iron Fist like bandana. And he's, he's edgy now. <laughs> I'm like, why? Not everything needs edge. <laughs> Leave it alone. No, um, Snapu, King Shark doesn't have telepathy. The shark does. The shark, because he, because back in the day in the Silver Age, if you evolved, or even the Bronze Age, just, if you evolved rapidly, you had telepathy. That was the idea. You know, like that whole fallacy of like, we're not using 100% of our brains. And like, hmm, 
the gray matter is feeding them. It's not technically, mm, it's not true. And then there were so many like things that came out about that. And so the, one of the ideas was that if we used all of it and evolved, we'd be telepathic. <laughs> Being telepathic would not, I don't, it would not be fun. I'm a big fan of like movies like Scanners and the like, where it's just depicted as being awful and difficult to control because it would, even if you could control it and it wasn't horribly painful and deafening, knowing what everybody thought all the time would be so genuinely awful. Like to, to have the emotional strength to be able to process the fact that people could think, think something awful about you, but still like you but they could have like intrusive thoughts or like really mean things they could think but still genuinely care for you that would be so difficult to balance and you know like handle as a person i'm like whenever there's a heroic telepath i'm like okay <laughs> okay sure i believe you so <laughs> just yeah it's there's i still i still think there's a lot of unmind stories that is a person with a really loud moped children live here <laughs> but yeah i still think there's a lot of uh why are you driving back because because our streets closed and you didn't know you didn't know but <laughs> but yeah there's a i think there's still a lot of unmind telepathy stories i think you can do a lot of stuff they've done some it is similar to some of the stuff they've done with like super hearing, like with the Plutonian and things like that. But we are Fergie. Thank you very much for the super chat. Professor X may disagree. Professor X in the past may disagree. The modern Dawn of X, way of X, Professor X is a monster. So <laughs> he probably would not. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Let's see catching up oh yeah there are there are marvel sharks too of course just like there's a marvel living eraser but the mar his car um, what's going on with that it's like bootleg king i mean like bootleg king is going on with the the living he's coming back why stop it <laughs> oh the town I live in is a university town. So sometimes it gets crazy. I'll probably have to leave for welcome week. <laughs> I'm just like, I just won't even be able to live here anymore. <laughs> I'm like, I need to go. <sighs> there's a, not, there's an irredeemable omnibus at the comic book store. And I thought about it. I did, but then it was a uh, $60, $60. I was like, <laughs> I would like to buy groceries this week. <laughs> Black Phoenix says it's Johnny Blaze. <laughs> oh, Ghost Rider. We need to do more Ghost Rider things. I've been bitten by a mosquito while I'm up here and it's huge. Oh, yeah, the moped is casually doing circles with this really loud muffler. Why is this muffler so loud? It's back. Okay, that is weird. It's back again. That's so weird. What is that dude doing? Why are they doing that? Oh, hi, Alvin. But legit, though, there's been a bunch of, like, break-ins in the area lately. Not, like, proper break-ins, but, like, you know, people opening cars and stuff like that. So I'm always kind of, like, sussed out when weird stuff happens in the neighborhood. I'm just kind of like, hmm. Hmm. I hope they stop, though, because... Stuff like that can really wake up young kids. There are a lot of kids. Oh, I'm about to a full mom. There's a lot of kids in this neighborhood, but it's true. <laughs> it is true. And I'm sure the students need to sleep too. So <laughs> it's a ghost maybe. <laughs> I know I shouldn't scratch it, but I can't. Oh, you're back. You're back. Hi. You're back. Oh, it's because I'm not I'm not downstairs and I should be. Really? I'm not where I I'm not where I should be. I should be downstairs, right? That's my place. <laughs> you came back to get me, huh? Ooh, it's 1030. 
<laughs> he's actually, uh, he's right. So <laughs> I want to thank all of you for hanging out and for seeing what is in the box and just for having a, uh, a fun time. I hope I had fun. I hope that you also had fun uh, tonight. So yeah, more videos as always coming ever soon. And it's been a good time. Like, share, comment, subscribe, even though it's a live stream. And I will I will see all of you again soon. Yes, I know. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. We're going down. All right. I will see all of you soon. Bye-bye.